en retrait unilatéral, bang annoncé, la veille de Noël. Je pense que ça va être un Just shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up parce qu'il est vraiment fâché. Ça y est. Ça y est. est. Regardez bien, ça y est. Regardez la leçon. Là, il est content. Ça y est. Ça y est. One way or the other, whether it's through you, through a military, through... Regardez bien son langage. Ça y est. Okay, absolutely. And I am proud, and I'll tell you what, I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I will take the mantle. I will be the one to shut it down. I'm not going to blame you for it. The last time you shut it down, it didn't work. I will take the mantle Good. of shutting down. And I'm going to shut it down for border but we security. But you shouldn't okay. shut it down. But you, the Thank you very much, everybody. He said, OK, you want to put that on the dos? I'm going to take the plan, Chuck. The last time, this thing has been closed, the government? And it hasn't worked. One day after, you came back and you accepted what I proposed. Il dit, moi, je le, tu veux que je le prenne le blanc pour le, la fermeture du gouvernement? Il dit, je vais le prendre. Et je suis fier de le prendre parce que je le fais pour la sécurité du pays. <rire> Il est complètement... Voyez-vous, chers amis, c'est ça la présidence de Donald Trump. Tout se fait en public. Ceux qui l'accusent d'être un dictateur. Je ne sais pas dans quelle dictature vous pouvez comparer ce genre de, de scène-là, mais tu verras ça d'une part ailleurs. C'est tout euh, The Roman Empire literally dominates the history school books. Again and again, it is underlined that it is the Greco-Roman culture that uh, placed the bedrock of everything that we call civilization. Strange, though, that uh, there are no actual artifacts proving the existence of this grand empire. Also a bit strange that the cartographers that were living at the time when this empire was supposedly flourishing and was at its peak also didn't notice it. The cartographer who made this map according to Wikipedia was its citizen at the time he made it and yet it says simple Italia where Italy is situated nowadays and still the people over there call their land Italia without any indications that other lands belong to this Italia or that it is any sort of center of anything whatsoever, let alone a mighty empire. Or maybe the famous uh, map of uh, Ptolemy. Here we read, the Ptolemy world map is a map of the world known to Hellenistic society in the second century. So with big letters he mentions uh, Dutchians and Aryans and other Africans and for the supposedly the Grand Empire that was at its peak at that time just a small Italia and no sign that it was governing all the civilized world and again the, sup the cartographers supposedly lived in this very Roman Empire and exactly at the time of its peak First, I'm going to uh, set the table, so to speak. As, first, I'll let me begin with this. How many of you know that everyone around the world was interested in these four blood moons that I discovered, talked about? A lot of people wrote about it, and a lot of people said things that I never said, and people were saying that I was saying that. But what I've always said, and I still very much hold to, is these were signs in the heavens warning mankind of something that was coming soon. 
All right? Now, let me show you this. The moon's orbit around the Earth is elliptical. Okay? It's like it's egg-shaped, so to speak. When the moon... Uh, let me go to my little diagram right here. Okay. Do you see the moon right here? Okay, there's the moon. Its orbit is elliptical, going around. Now, sometimes it, when it goes around, it's not always the same amount of distance. It might be like this the next time. So sometimes it's close, sometimes it's far away. When the Earth is at, or the moon is at its furthest point from Earth, it's called the apogee, long ways away. When it's at its closest point to Earth, it's called perigee. Okay, everyone got that? Okay. Now, whenever you see the sun, the earth, and the moon in a straight line, it becomes a great scrabble word. Syzygy. Okay? Now, but if you go back and look here, you know, the moon is over here. Here's the, here's the sun we're saying right in here, glowing this way. The moon is here. The earth is here. It's not in syzygy. It's not in direct alignment. You know when the moon is in direct alignment between the earth and the sun, we get an eclipse, right? Okay. Now, we are about to see a record-breaking super moon. It's the biggest in nearly 70 years. Now, the moon looks real big if it's seen just over the horizon. If it's real high in the sky, it doesn't look like a big super moon because it's so high in the sky. So the best time to see a super moon and it looks really big is if you're up when it just crests the horizon. Now, how many of you know the number 70 is very significant? Well, here's a news article. Well, first, let me tell you this. Normally, scientifically, you only get like one super moon every year in a couple of months. It so happens this year we have three super moons in a row. There's one in October, there's one in November, and there's one in December. But the one in November is the super duper moon. Okay? What is meant by a super moon? A, a super moon is when it is a full moon, okay? And it's at its closest point to Earth. If it's a full moon and it's at apogee, if it's far away, that doesn't make as much of a difference if it's, if it's at perigee. If it's at its closest point to Earth and it's a full moon, now it looks really big because it's closer, right? Okay. <clears throat> we have three full moons in a row that all appear at apogee. But this one in November is special. Okay, what do we find? First off, it's the same night we have Arya Bromowitz. Now, supposedly, because we're going on daylight savings time, according to uh, science data, the sunset is going to be here in Seattle about 4.30 in the afternoon, and the moon rises at 5.18. So here in Seattle, if it's not cloudy, that's a big if, you'll be able to take a picture of this super moon coming up over the horizon an hour before we meet with Arya Bromowitz. Okay, now, here's a newspaper article, I believe. It says, we're about to see a record-breaking supermoon, the biggest, like I said, in nearly how many years? It's the closest full moon in this century. Now, look at this next paragraph. If you only see one astrono astronomical event this year, make it the November supermoon, when the moon will be the closest to its Earth since it's been, since January, what year? Wow! 70 years, right before Israel becomes a nation. Here we have these three super moons in a row. All right, the biggest one is just in a week and a half on Monday night, November 14th. It says here at the bottom that the, it won't happen again until November of 2034. Okay, so I just wanted to point out that you have three super moons in a row with the biggest one happening this next week right before the flood takes place, biblically. Okay, now here's just a, this, I am not endorsing any presidential candidate here, but I'm just stating a fact. The inauguration ceremony for president is on January 20th of 2017. It is every year. 
with the celebration to follow. The next president, whoever that may be, their first full day in office will be the following day, January 21st, 2017. Everyone follow me? It just so happens. On June 14th, 2016, Donald Trump turned 70 years old. So on January 14th, Donald Trump will be 70 years and seven months old and seven days on the inauguration day. Now, I just think that's fat. This is a fact. Donald Trump will be 70 years old, seven months and seven days old, his first day in office. Now, I'm not endorsing a candidate. I am, I am just telling you that this is fascinating. This kind of stuff fascinates me. Now, here's the next thing. The number seven, as you know, is very significant. In Hebrew, the seventh letter is Zayin, and it means a weapon. Okay? It even looks like a, le a weapon. You can see the little white Zayin within the handle of the axe. So here's what's fascinating. The, here, the word Zamar, the first letter of the word to sing is Zamar uh, in Psalms 911. The Zion also represents to prune, Leviticus 25.3. Now this year in Hebrew is 5777. 777. Okay. Now, what you realize, what Hebrew letter is the seventh letter? Zayin, seven, seven, seven. The first digit is five, okay? And the five means, hey, to behold. So here, this year means to behold, weapon, 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 warfare, warfare, warfare. The last time, 70 years ago, we had this big super mood was before Israel went to war in 1948. Freedom of Information Act leaks CIA documents future pole shift, 1,000 mile per hour winds, and 10,000 foot high tidal wave burying North America in less than three hours. It's titled The Adam and Eve Story by Chan Thomas. I was fortunate enough to actually find a 1965 copy autographed and inscribed by the author. Just ordered it. Should get this any day now. Super excited. But this is literally a sanitized copy that I'm going to share with you now. And yeah, they put some hand sanitizer on it to make it palatable for you guys. But why in the world would the Central Intelligence Agency classify a 65-page story of cataclysms, Adam and Eve, unless there's something to it? Maybe it isn't just highly concentrated swamp gas from Uranus. Let me read some excerpts from this to you guys right now. An audible low rumble grows to a thundering roar. The earthquake starts unlike any in recorded history. California, the mountain shakes like ferns in a breeze. Pacific Ocean rears back, piling into a mountain of water more than two miles in height, then races eastward. With the force of a thousand armies, the wind destroys everything in its path with supersonic bombardment. A mountain of Pacific seawater follows the wind east, bearing Los Angeles and San Francisco like grains of sand. Nothing stops the onslaught of wind and ocean. Across the continent, thousand mile per hour winds and earthquakes leave not one place untouched. Any places the Earth's molten sublayer breaks through and spreads a sea of white hot liquid fire, adding to the doomlicious Armageddon Exotica. I added that. Do you like that? Within three hours, the wall of water buries the land under two miles of water, coast to coast. Antarctica and Greenland, with their ice caps, now rotate around the Earth. In the torrid zone. 
What does that mean? Well, let me show you. Here's the torrid zone. Hold on a second. Will you just look at it? There we go. The torrid zone. Well, hmm. That's where Costa Rica is. So you're saying that the ice caps are going to be in central Earth now. Central torrid zone. Wow, that's, that's quite the change, folks. That's quite the change. Now, let's go back to this sanitized copy. Once again, I can't wait to get the original autographed and inscribed by the author. I'm so glad that I was getting that I was fortunate enough to get a copy of this. Super excited. But let me share with you a little bit here. Talks about the next cataclysm, the great floods, the story, the event, Genesis, and the conclusion of the author. But the next cataclysm, like Noah's 6,500 years ago, like Adam and Eve's 11,500 years ago, this too will come to pass. So I shared with you just bits and pieces with a rumble so low as to be inaudible, growing, throbbing, then turning into a thundering roar. The earthquake starts, only it's not like any earthquake in recorded history. Now, that sounds like also maybe some type of weaponry used to cause the earthquake. In California, the mountains shake like ferns in a breeze. The mighty Pacific rears back and piles up into a mountain of water more than two miles high, then starts its race eastward. So, a mile is what, 5,400 and something feet? That's 11,000 feet spanning the North American continent from, east to, from west to east in three hours. So, that would make me think that even Denver, the Mile High City, is not going to be safe unless, here, here's what I think. Let's say that there's some validity to this vision, to this story. That a two-mile high tidal wave starts from California. It's not going to be two miles by the time it, two miles in height by the time it reaches Colorado. With the force of a thousand armies, the wind attacks, ripping, shredding everything in its supersonic bombardment. The unbelievable mountain of Pacific seawater flows, follows the wind eastward, burying Los Angeles and San Francisco as if they were but grains of sand. Nothing but nothing stops the relentless, overwhelming onslaught of wind and ocean across the continent. The thousand mile per hour wind wreaks its unholy vengeance everywhere, mercilessly Unceasingly, every living thing is ripped into shreds while being blown across the countryside, and the earthquake leaves no place untouched. In many places, the Earth's molten sublayer breaks through and spreads a sea of white hot liquid fire to add to the Holocaust. Sounds like Yellowstone. Within three hours, the fantastic wall of water moves across the continent, bearing the wind ravaged land under two miles of seething water coast to coast in a fraction of a day all vestiges of civilization are gone and the great cities los angeles san francisco chicago dallas new york are nothing but legends barely a stone is left where millions walked just a few hours before a few lucky ones who managed to find shelter from the screaming wind on the lee side of Pike's Peak, watch the sea of molten fire break through the quaking valleys below. The raging waters follow, piling higher and higher, steaming over the molten earth fire and rising almost to their feet. Only great mountains such as this one can withstand the cataclysmic onslaught. North America is not alone in her death throes. Central America suffers the same cannon, cannonade and Gatorade. Would you like some Gatorade? It has battery acid in it, but it's good for you. What was that stuff they were putting in Gatorade? And then that little girl exposed them. And they're like, oh, okay, you're right. We're sorry. We won't put battery acid in anymore. It was some type of, it wasn't battery acid, but it was some type of nasty chemical. And the news made it seem as if the, the little people won because... 
Gatorade had to take the Gatorade decided to take this nasty chemical out of their product. It's like, okay, we're sorry. All right, I'm divagating. Let's get back to this. A few lucky ones who managed to find shelter from the screaming wind on the lee side of Pike Peak watched the sea of molten fire break through the quaking valleys below. The raging waters follow, piling higher and higher, streaming over the molten earth fire and rising almost to their feet. North America is not alone in her death rows. Central America suffers the same cannonade. Wind, earth, fire, and South American f- South America nah, 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 finds the Andes not high enough to stop the cataclysmic violence pounded out by nature in her berserker rage. In less than a day, Ecuador, Peru, and western Brazil are shaken madly by the devastating earthquake, burned by molten earth fire, buried under cubic miles of torrential Pacific seas, and then turned into frozen hell. Everything freezes, man, beast, plant, and mud are all rock hard in less than four hours. Europe cannot escape the onslaught. The raging Atlantic poles. The Atlantic piles higher and higher upon itself, following the screeching wind eastward. The Alps, Pyrenees, Urals, Scandinavian mountains are shaken and heaved even higher before the wall of water strikes. Western Africa, the sands of the Saharas vanish in nature's wrath under savage attack by wind and ocean, the area bounded by the Congo, South Africa, and Kenya suffers only severe earthquakes and winds. No inundation. Survivors there marvel at the sun standing still in the sky for nearly half a day. So the sun stands still for half a day. 